All right, we're good. This week, we're going to talk about uh, stacking leveling kits on lift kits, and when you can do it, and when you can't do it. And why. And why you can't. And why you would want to do it. Or why you would want to. Let's start off. What is the, uh, what's the word to my banker? Shh. That's random. Yeah. We don't announce that. We don't announce it. I just say it. Says it's not. No, Jared's an idiot. Dom, you're fucking up. Dom, dude. Come on, Dom. Do we lower traps? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Of course we do. When they're on the lift, we lower them down. All right. <laughs> so stacking <coughs> leveling kits on lift kits. Give us a All quick right. rundown, Banker. So you're going to have two types of lifts. You're either going to have a lift strut that you can see is very much longer than your stack strut. Or you're gonna have the Brad. What are those called? Spacer, spacer style. Can they? Can you see this? Okay. Okay. The spacer style. I use Chevy as an example because they're the easiest one to work with. Um, so you have your two style leveling kits for Chevy. You have the below strut and the on top of the strut. So let's say you have a 07 to 13 Silverado. And BDS only makes a six inch lift kit, but you want to run 12 wides and 35s. You can't with that lift because it'll hit literally everything and you won't be able to turn. So you need to go up to eight inches. So what you're going to want to do, stack a leveling kit. Now, <clears throat> if you have the lift strut style, which is ideal, you can throw your leveling kit on top or on the bottom safely. Um, do that. If you have the spacer style and you stack another spacer on top, you now have three sets of shear points. Shear points. Tiny seven sixteenths hardware that is maybe grade eight. Before we move on, let's just say this. Moving we on. don't we don't uh-huh. recommend this <laughs> at all. Just because there's no companies that are combining these two and have tested them. These are just what people are doing. Correct. So you're at your own risk whenever you do this. I yeah. respect you. But don't ever do that. Don't put a level on top of a spacer. Putting the bottom spacer, I have seen it done. It's less sketchy. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Anyone do that really? Yeah, we have one come in. It had two different kinds on it. Had two. Had oh. a different one on each side. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the bottom spacer with the lift spacer on top is doable. Um, you know, if you're gonna do it, make sure you're using grade eight hardware, probably not the grade five that came with your leveling kit. Go to the hardware store, buy something a little bit stronger. Um, but it's just welding onto it. Yeah, no, don't just <laughs> weld shit together. Chances are this is aluminum. This is steel. Um, Can't call it. But if you're ever gonna even attempt or you think you want to go higher in the future, splurge the extra, how much is it extra for lift struts with the kit? Mm, depends. It's at my truck. What brand? If it's a rough country, it's $200. No. BDS. Can't call it. <laughs> Three, 300 bucks? Um, Spend a little know. bit of extra money, get the, the uh, longer lift struts, you'll be happier with those. You Pretty sure they only offer lift struts. Yeah, and you won't die. Um, did you just say BDS doesn't offer lift struts? No, they only offer it with lift struts. Oh. It's possible. Anything BDS is possible. Uh, <laughs> Don, do you want me to go over the rear? Because they like to stack rear blocks too. So, oh. Uh, oh. On a Chevy, you're going to have your lead <coughs> frame. One other leaf spring because they're stupid these days. Mm-hmm. Nice and low. You're gonna have your top leaf spring, and probably like one extra because that's all they do anymore. Your pin, one pin in the center, and then a block. Now, most block lift kits will give you different size blocks depending on your lift kit. Two inch block, four inch block, one inch block, whatever. Um, some kits, Fabtech in particular, with what they're for in, your factory is going to have a small block in it. 
like this. What Fabtech likes to do is give you another small block that fits over the top of your original block like that. That is okay to do. It, it's designed that way, they allow you to do that. What you don't want to do is take your factory block and put one of these giant lift blocks underneath because all it's holding is that little bitty pin and this thing's probably going to want to shit out and you're going to die. It's not going to be fun. <coughs> Ford could be fun to that. Do we not two pins hmm? in theirs and when you put in the lift kit you'll notice that they usually get rid of one or they'll make it flat and you have only the rear pin. Um, so that's again it's only going to have one <laughs> hole in it now so you're not going to be able to use your factory block that has the two holes in it. Was that a Lego? Yeah, it's a Lego. I believe that you made that analogy yes. in your recent Fruit Pro Ride Pro video. Ride. It's Those like are Legos. 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 So well, then you're going to put your block in that only has one pin. And now this one's hitting, you're going to grind that off, and that's not safe. <coughs> so don't do that. And now we should talk about pinion angles and driveline angles. Yeah, so that... It's going to fuck everything Your up. lift block is going to be angled a little bit, designed to tip the, uh, the pinion. And now you're screwing up that geometry, you're probably going to have a vibration, you're going to blow out your joints, and you're going to get stuck on the on-ramp to the highway like Jared. That's he's not here, so he's not here tonight because he screwed up his pinion angle and uh, blew out a U-joint. Yep. You also have premature CD shaft wear. If you stack like this, you're taking, you're getting drastic angles, and you don't have the actual spacer. Well, that's, I think we're are, that's going to be a whole other category because we're we're kind of explaining what people do now, and then we're going to explain why you shouldn't, and then why. Right, Tom? Yep. Okay. Well, okay. that's fine. We can get into that. So in the front, when you're stacking this leveling kit, remember that your lift was designed at six inches. CV angles are designed to sit with a six inch lift. You're adding two inches, now you're at eight. Your CV angle is going down, which is gonna put more stress on it. Yes. Your rotation angle, you're gonna go out of angle. So operation angle is zero to three. Speak up. Operation angle for a drive line is zero to three in most cases. Zero to three what? Degrees. Celsius? <laughs> <laughs> Fahrenheit, stupid idiot. This is America. Sorry, Kel. Scientific. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I guess we wanted to touch on, okay, so we kind of talked about uh, how people do it, and then what, the, what they were just going over is some of the risks involved when you do so. Uh, just like they just said, I'm just kind of reiterating, uh, the kits were designed to be at, say, six inches. You're going to stack a leveling kit, a two-inch leveling kit, put it at eight inches. you got to expect that once you do that, you're obviously going to put the components at a greater angle. And that's always not a good thing because some kits, depending on how they're designed, um, will already be somewhat maxed out at six inches, depending on the kit <coughs> manufacturer. And if you go two more inches, you're just gonna destroy ball joints and CV axles <coughs> by doing so. So, you know, this is something that no one really recommends. None of the ma manufacturers will recommend you do this. We don't really, we're not going to recommend it to you either, but we're just telling you what people do and how people get away with it, because I'm sure you'll read somewhere that someone's doing this, someone's doing that, but they're doing this. Our gallery. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, people do it, obviously. Uh, it's not recommended, it's not ideal, but it's, people do it, and we're kind of just explaining how and what things you need to watch for. You know, the two main things, obviously, on an independent front suspension is going to be Watch for your ball joint angles. So see what kind of angles your control arms are at. And then also CV shaft angles for the uh, four wheel drive trucks. And then as well as you, there's lots of things to take into account in terms of brake lines and other things that also should be longer with the tar lift tight. So there's, there's lots of things to take into consideration. And you know, the main thing is that you do take those things into consideration to do it safely and smart. There's a reason why the manufacturers aren't doing this. So take that into consideration whenever you're thinking about doing this or going the cheap way out. 
Like, there's a reason why they don't do it. Yeah. And same with, like, solid axle, front front solid axle <coughs> trucks, say, like, a Super Duty. You know, say you have a six-inch kit on there, and people will just put a two-inch leveling kit on to bump it up to eight inches. And, you know, why not? I don't have... I don't have ball joints to worry about. Well, you do, but not, not on a control arm. I don't have to worry about the wear on CV axles or anything like that. But then there's also, you know, your front drive line, your drive shaft. You're you're messing with all those angles and possibly binding the U joints and stuff like that, or overextending brake lines. There's always something to consider. So, I guess that's the whole point. Is think about it. Yeah. Should we do a giveaway? Lift a T and a sticker? We no. Ne we never gave a word. We don't have to do a word. No, we do. Sure we do. Yeah. We can ask how many are in the gallery. Oh, no. that's good. <coughs> that's stupid. Today's word is sprinkles. 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 There it is. Today's word. You got any questions for me? Let's do questions now. Do we have any questions yet? Yep. So the first question is from Kenny. Kenny Powers? It says, I have a three inch uh, <laughs> suspension lift on my 2014 Tacoma pre-runner. What do I need to fit, uh, what do I need to do to fit 33 by 12 and a half R20 on 20 by 12 wheels? 20 by 12s? Mm. On a what year, 13, Taco what did he say? On a Tacoma pre-runner. Tacoma pre-runner. <laughs> He's gonna wear you one of those fancy pre-runner bumpers. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably have an issue running into the front bumper, so. Um, if you were to have an aftermarket bumper, that would definitely help. On the rear cab mount. Yeah. What what size lift? Three inch. Three <coughs> inch. Ooh. That's not much. It's just gonna, <laughs> he's probably gonna have to throw up in your. I mean, he'd probably have to go. I mean, uh, at least like. I mean, I hate to say it, but put a body lift on it. Don't say that. Don't say I, that. I, I, we won't do it for you, but. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, the hard part is just the nature of a 12-wide wheel on that truck, you know. <coughs> Even if you went with, like, a 6-inch lift, it's still not, it's, the, a 12-wide's still going to fucking hit yeah. on the body mount. <coughs> so, expect to chop your body mount up, the one uh, right behind the rear wheel. Behind the front wheel. Oh, <laughs> yeah, front, the rear of the front wheel. And um, <laughs> got guys are here hacking up the beds. Yeah, and as well as the bumper thing. But yeah, fitting a 12 wide on a Toyota Tacoma is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> Next, uh, Logan wants to know what is the most durable eight-inch lift kit that doubles as a nice show lift for a 2003 F250. That doubles as a show lift. <laughs> is it <that> what? <coughs> Bullet proof. Yeah, I mean. He, so he wants basically a lift that that functions and is is heavy duty, but can be pretty. The McGrath's <laughs> kit's really nice. Yeah, the one with the for a super duty though. Yeah, I've, I've never even seen a McGrath. Yeah, I don't know if they have one for a super duty, yeah. but the only McGrath shit I've ever seen is IFS stuff. Yeah. So what do you suggest? I don't know. What's your price range? <laughs> you know, like yeah, there's a bunch of, I mean. No. If you had to go middle of the road price range. If you want something show, you can get everything powder coated. Right, but it's a super duty, so it's a live axle, so all you're gonna have are some drop brackets and you can get your. You should go with a BDS four link kit, and then you can powder coat the uh, four link control arms. You get the springs and be too. real cool. Yeah. Your springs powder coated. Be real what is it? All three. A lot of that. Oh. Isn't that still a leaf spring? Yeah, it's leaf spring front. <coughs> ah, so you're just gonna be like. Yeah, there's, not there's really nothing cool there. to look at there. Yeah, I'm like, oh, loose springs. Shocks. Powder coat your loose springs. We've <laughs> done it before. <laughs> your traction bar? Yeah. Noah guy. Yeah, did that. He's kind of queer, but. <laughs> oh. Oh. Whoa. We still hang out with him. We mean weird, not. Yeah. No. All right. <laughs> Cody wants to know. He says he has a five inch lift and 37 size 02 Ram 1500. Bumps steers like crazy. How could he fix it? Steering stabilizer. Yeah, steering stabilizer. Maybe a the truck. What year is it? O two. O two? Is that, yeah, is that still O2. is that <coughs> Ram fifteen hundred? Is that still solid front axle? No. Check uh, also your steering box and stuff. Make sure your everything's not. Something's out of whack if it's bumps steering. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <coughs> you might have just a like, component that's wore down. Either be, I don't know, drag link something like that. It's 
Shit, there's, there's a lot of things. If your truck's bump steering, that means <coughs> something is out of alignment. Something is in terms of the steering geometry because uh, probably properly designed suspension or steering system is not going to bump steer. So something that is altered <coughs> and causing it to bump steer, whether that's a worn component being any kind of steering component, control arm, ball joint, what whatever it may be. Bad tire. Yeah. I mean, we've had guys have vibrations or have shakes. And, you know, if you ever Google death wobble, you'll see them. You see the Jeeps have it. If you ever have a Jeep, you probably know what that um, is. Some of the new, the brand new Dodges had a problem here about a year or so back with getting bump steer going down the road. Uh, but a lot of it's either tires or opponents. So. Shop truck is terrible bump steer. Well, that's because it was wrecked. <laughs> that's because it was wrecked. And, uh, and came due to the Saturn bump steers, the rear bump steers. <laughs> when you hit the right rear on the bump, it's just like... <laughs> What do you got for us next? Hold on. Let's give away a lifted t-shirt and a sticker. Lifted t-shirt giveaway! So... And a, not, it's not a sticker, it's a decal. Don't throw a sticker. But yeah, the 24-inch decal, the lifted decal, so you get the t-shirt and the decal for whoever can tell us the keyword fastest that we can see it. That we can see it, people. Don't get all butt hurt when it doesn't show up. <laughs> Sprinkles, honey. Sprinkles. Penny. We got it. Robe, garb, got sprinkles. Who? Penny. 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 Yep. <coughs> All right, Penny. Jake, tell Penny what they need to do. You need to email shipping. Ship. Ship. Yeah. Ship at customoffsets. Ship at customoffsets.com. Ship at customoffsets.com. Let them know what you want and an address and, and your name. Your name, and they'll get this sent out to you. We also have your name, so don't try anything fun. Penny. Yep. <clears throat> nice. Alright, uh, John wants to know will a two inch leveling kit have a negative effect on his 06 F350? Have a negative effect? No. <coughs> I mean, get it aligned after you do it, but I mean, as far as driving and change, you're not going to see anything different. You're literally just, it'll just level the truck out. That's what it's designed for. You may hit your truck after trying to work on it, but it's probably the only negative effect. Yeah. There's no effects to ride while you're in. Nope. Nope. Alright. Uh, Gabriel wants to know, uh, he says, I have a 96 Chevy. 4x4 four four K1500. He wants to lift it, but he's between a BDS lift kit or FTS. What should he get? <laughs> he would like to fit 37s. Well, to fit 37s, you're going to need to go 9 inches. Yeah, we know that. <coughs> those things, I don't know. There's so many kits out for those, too. Yeah. Um, the FTS is going to be more show, the BDS is going to be more go, really. Function. So, you know, BDS, use it, abuse it thing. And then the FTS has really nice finishes, um, polished hardware, things like that. So I guess it depends on what he's cool going for. Cool iron crosses. Yeah. Depends cool on, stuff. you know, well, the end product. Oh, are they both torsion drop? Yeah. Oh. You can't get away with a non-torsion drop on an yeah, OBS. Yeah, you have to straight axle them if you're yeah. going to do that. All right, moving on. Are you sure? Uh, positive. Um, Dennis wants to know how hard it is to install the NFAB pre-runner bumper on an 04 Ram 2500. Well, Dennis, <laughs> if you're local, you should bring it here. Um, it's not hard? <coughs> yeah, how hard? I guess it depends on where it is. It's an 04 Dodge, so you know if that bumper's rusted tight on there. It's as simple as removing the factory bumper and putting it back on. Yeah, so it, it's just if you can take some nuts and bolts off and you're willing to spend the time, um, and then if, you know, and if you have the correct tools, I would say it's it's something that yeah anybody could really do it. You're it's probably gonna to want to have, have, have a buddy yeah. to help you lift it off and put the new one on because the new are, one's probably heavier. Yeah, but it's <coughs> it's, it's a doable. simple yeah bolts on deal. Good way to educate yourself. Jerry, One way or the other. 
<laughs> yep. John says he already hates his 6.0 after doing the injectors. Yeah, we should sell it. Should have bought, should have bought a 7.3. Yeah, that's, that's 6.0. There's a reason you got it pretty cheap, isn't there? No. How's your lasagna pizza, Brad? Amazing. What do you got for us? We don't have any other questions. I heard a lowering. Someone asked if we lower stuff. Yes. Where? It's Instagram? Did you hear Instagram. Brad? What he said? On Instagram? Somebody asked that on Instagram. We're no longer live on Instagram. Oh. Uh, Facebook. How many people do we have on Facebook right now? Four. Four. Thirty-one. Thirty-one people and nobody has questions. Come on, guys. I know we ain't pretty, so I know you're not here for the visual sights. <laughs> what are you guys' feelings on a zone five-inch lift? Like your personal feelings. For what? Uh, Zach Shaughnessy just wants to know about zone lifts. And what's your take on it? I love zone lifts. Brad has one. I have one on my own truck. And I think zone is the best bang for the buck lift. Period. They're made by BDS. So... Good design quality. You share a lot of range. the engineering and R&D that goes into <coughs> BDS kits between the two. Some components are shared. Uh, for the most part, the finishes are the same. It's really the best bang for the buck, in my opinion. So Joe Martin said, going off that zone versus BDS, he said, since they're pretty much the same, what do you prefer? Who is this? Joe. What's his last name? Martin. Is it the Joe Martin we've been watching all day? I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> What's the question? <coughs> uh, zone versus BDS, since they're the same, which do you prefer? They're not the same. They're similar. Why are they not the same? They're made the same company. Zone and has... Zone and BDS are both owned by Fox Shocks. Uh, BDS obviously is their suspension side, so uh, they share a, a lot of. There's a lot of components that they share. They share a lot of engineering. So, Some but you better. get more things with a BDS kit. <coughs> so BDS technically is a it's a better kit BDS, but Zone kits are definitely great for the money. So if money's not an option, I'm going to pick a BDS kit. But if money is an option or is a concern, I would go with a zone. Right. So your biggest, you know, it's going to have the lift strut on a BDS, the spacer on a zone. Not always. It's, you know, well, it's, it's one, small one, one of the things that you might have differently. Right. Yeah. It's things that they can use differently. to Or like zone will do smaller lifts and shit, like for my truck, three inch. You know, BDS just goes right to four and a half or whatever. Right. Zone, you can get the Adventure Series shocks. Yeah. So a cheaper Fox shock instead of the high-end uh, aluminum body. Or, yeah, stainless. It's aluminum. Right. Fritz wants to know, what's the best daily driver six-inch lift for a 16 Silverado Dually? The best daily driver? Get. Most comfortable. Oh, you're gonna hate lifting a dually, um, <laughs> especially if you're dailying it, like on the highway. It's gonna buck. It's no matter what lift kit you do, there's really no way around it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've seen guys start to put the airbags and stuff in there, and getting. I've seen guys take out leaf springs and had airbags to make up for the squat, just because when you had those trucks are made to haul stuff. So if they're not hauling stuff, they ride like a brick. And when you throw them up in the air, you got a bigger brick. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's, they're just kind of hard to handle. So any of the kits, I would say, across the board, you're going to get, they're just going to be stiff. And you got to know that going into it. Um, but they're, I mean, unless you were doing, like, an air ride setup or something like that, like, on the lift side of it, that's about the only way you're going to get away from it being rough riding, unfortunately. I know a lot of guys. Man. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of guys have the Fabtech one. But, again, it, it rides rough. You got to. You know, expect that, but Fabtech does make You're it. You're not going to get a good riding off the shelf kit for a dually. If you want something that's going to ride nice, it's going to be custom made. Yeah. Pretty much. <clears throat> or, I guess, like a Kelderman setup. Yeah. I mean, Cognito Which might as well be nice custom made. Too, yeah. but. Drop 10 grand, you'll ride like a you know, Cadillac. Mm. Like a like a newer Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 59 is pretty good. Lifted. Or, I'm lifted live. Yeah, you should feel special, dude. I don't even have one of those stickers. He has a stock offset sticker. I do. <laughs> those are limited. They're out of production, so. 
That's <laughs> dumbass. All right, we got time for one more question. Uh, Pay wants to know what's the best way to get even wear on new Mickey Thompson AT35s. See so on Havoc 20s, saying 24. Why does everyone say that wrong? Why can't people say Havoc? Offset. Havoc. On a seven and a half inch amazing. lift, daily driven Silverado. Tire rotation. Yeah. Run rot- tires are wearing on the edges. Yeah. Rotation is key. And then um, alignment. Yeah, alignment. What I noticed, <coughs> particularly in my truck, is I pull into my driveway the same way every day, day after day. I take a left, and the outside edge of my right front was wearing faster than the rest because it was constantly rolling up into my driveway. So rotate rotation is key. So you bought a new house. I ripped out my driveway. <laughs> that will work. Uh, yeah. Rotation. Rotation. Alignment. Alignment. <laughs> Correct. Even, e- even oh. if you know nothing has happened, it's not <coughs> a bad idea to get alignment. You know, once a year, just because shit can happen. Or if you send it. Yeah. Maybe you need to get them a little more off. Also, yeah. sometimes people get an alignment and they'll be like, oh, I got an alignment, it's fine. But there could be some underlying issues with components being worn out. Right. And not being aware that components are worn out. And when components are worn, such as like ball joints, you'll have, it'll cause weird tire wear, like cupping and stuff like that. So, make sure everything's in tip top condition. Make sure it's aligned and rotate, and right. your tires will wear fine. It's always a good idea to check over your lift every time you do an oil change and rotate your tires every oil change. Um, yeah. For most trucks, that's 3,000 miles, 5,000 if you're really stretching it. What is a diesel? 10? I don't change my I don't know. You don't change your own oil? Just you're a mechanic. Never just keeps filling it up, man. Oh, God. It just runs, that's why it it just runs out. That's why you roll so much coal. <laughs> All right, Brad wants to know, he has a 2015 F350. Can he clear 37s with a four and a half inch lift? No. <laughs> What? Can you clear 37s? What year? 15. No. With a four and a half? That's what Justin has. Uh-huh. On stock wheels you could. Oh, I guess. Okay. Uh-huh. Depends on the offset, bro. Always depends, depends on, on the size, offset. I guess. He has custom offsets. You have custom offsets. I do. 13-inch wide wheels, weirdo. Banker says yes on stock size wheels or something similar. <laughs> yeah. But if you go 10 or 12, 12 wide, I'd no. 12 wide is absolutely not. The Judd's the Justin's on, and he's he way to trim that on 35s. So. so what could he get away with? You can go 35s on really any width wheel, 37s only on a stock, you know, greater than a plus 12, but not too great. Not greater than, or less than. Not less than 12, hmm? not greater than. Yeah, not less than positive 12, not greater than positive, like, 35. Okay. It's weird numbers. All right. Is that it? And yeah, it's 6.30. 6 let Let's do one more quick giveaway. All right. Good boy. A sticker and a tea. One more giveaway. A sticker and a tee. this one, right? Oh. No. We, we always give away a sticker and a t-shirt to our YouTube guys. So as soon as this goes up on YouTube, this episode... Wait, are we still putting this on YouTube? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, call. as soon as this goes up on YouTube, the uh, first comment of tonight's word of the day on our YouTube page will also win a, uh, a lifted t-shirt and a lifted sticker. You're going to want to follow the instructions that we've been saying all night. But let's do one for you guys that are on watching us on Facebook right now. So keyword, go. 30-second delay. You probably were already saying that. Same guy. As soon as someone mentioned the giveaway, they're probably like, oh, oh, oh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword. 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 Keyword of the night is something that Mario likes at strip pit. <laughs> Lifted tea in a sticker, the keyword. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Come on. It's your special name. First person to <laughs> comment tonight's keyword gets also a no sticker one. and a t shirt. Is this sprinkles is, still the keyword? Th- yes, this is for the uh, <laughs> Facebook guys. Mario's nickname. <coughs> Some people might know no, it is. that's old. No, that's not. Are you not? Yeah, you know. 
We're Dennis waiting. got it. Who got it? Who got Dennis? it? Dennis. Dennis the Menace. You got it, boy. Dennis, Dennis you're going to want to email ship at customoffsets.com. Hey, here comes Sprinkles. Sprinkles. Hey. Sprinkles. Stand in front of the camera. See you guys next time. Yeah, so uh, we'll catch you guys in two weeks. Hi, Sprinkles. <laughs>